Hello and welcome to Jazz After Dark. How you doing out there today? I don't know what's with the Mr. Rogers voice, but uh, that just uh, aged myself there. I'll be joining you tonight with, uh, just going old school here, Spirit of the Oak. This uh, very, very nice, actually very sweet, uh, if, you're, if you're into this sort of thing. Uh, it's by Dark Door Spirits there. It's a very sweet bourbon whiskey. So if you've got a drink there and you're enjoying yourself, well, welcome. Hey, by the way, this is uh, we got this in LJ, Georgia when we were up there. Uh, I was telling my wife, I'm like, you know how like your grandparents would say like they traveled and all oh, that peace that's from France or whenever they, they shipped it home. And we were talking about that. And so we split up and kind of went walking around the town and stuff. And she's like, look, I got us something. And I'm like, OK, she's like, it's a thing. Right. So now, you know, we, we wrote on the back of it. It comes from Ella J, Georgia. And uh, I'm like, well, yeah, not exactly what I was talking about, but a good start. Right? You got to start somewhere. So now she's making me use these coasters. One of them says, call me old fashioned. And the other says, uh, uh, classic bourbon. OK, uh, but anyways, I'll be using those. What are we talking about today? You know how occasionally we'll, I, I'll bring this up, the yield curve inversion. You, you know what that is? It becomes a big deal on financial media when it first inverts, when one of the pairs first inverts, usually the twos versus the tens or the tens versus the twos is the right way to say it. I won't go into detail about what that is because we've done a lot of those classes, but in the short, basically what it means is the short term bonds or notes are yielding more than the long-term bonds. And that's weird. It should be this way. Or if you're looking at this, flip me around. And the reason for that is because, you know, uh, you're, you should be getting a smaller return for the, less, or the least amount of time you're taking risk. And if you're taking risk for 30 years, you should be getting a larger return to offset inflation and et cetera. So when it's normal, that's just a yield curve, right? So a six month treasury may trade for next to nothing compared to a 30 year bond. So as you work your way longer in time, you get paid more as the buyer. Um, well, when that flip flops the other way, that's a bad sign. And the reason for that is because people believe the risk is right now. It's in the short term. Something's going wrong. The next two years, I'm so worried about my money that I've got to earn more uh, or the bond seller has to pay more for you to take over in yield terms. But they feel like it'll be fine in 10 years. So the 10 years is actually less. And so it's a weird thing that happens. So typically we look at that and we say, well, that's a, if there's an inversion, well, that must mean things aren't going very well. And as you might imagine right now, most people don't think things are going amazingly well, maybe slowing down a little bit. Well, there is a uh, fun stat that I like to share with you. It's actually just a phrase, a saying that um, every yield curve inversion was followed by a recession. However, not every recession was brought on by a yield curve inversion. That's just one of those things like sell in May and go away till Labor Day, right? You've heard that one there. The Santa Claus rally, uh, the June swoon and all these things. You know, the, these are sayings that somebody came up with. Well, I thought, how accurate is that? I've been saying the same thing. Did I just pick it up in my head and all of a sudden I'm saying the same thing out there and it's not true? So what we have for you today is a scan of every pair <laughs> that you can do. And what we said was, all right, if the tens and twos are inverted, meaning the two year note is trading for more or yield than the 10 year, um, how many times was a recession followed after that? And we had to put a timeline to it so we could play with different timelines. But for tonight, we had to put a timeline to it. And we said, give it two years. Because remember, marking a recession is a backwards looking thing. They don't say like, oh, the recession started today. They say, well, it turns out a quarter ago is when it started. And in reality, they say two quarters ago, at the beginning of that quarter, that's when the recession started. And now we just now kind of know we're in the thick of it or something. That's how they actually um, officially say it when they tell the truth and they say it when it's supposed to happen. Side topic. Anyway, so here's what we've got. Uh, <laughs> don't let us scare you. All right, so here's every pair. So for example, 
The 30 year versus the one year, when that pair is inverted, 100% of the time, two, within two years, there was a recession. When the 30 year versus the three month is inverted, 100% uh, of the time. I, or I rank them by percentage of time we found a recession to come within two years. So there, there's no real rhyme or reason to why these are paired up like this. It's because it lines up with uh, recessions. So anyways, you can see, work your way on down here. You're going through the fives, one month, two years, one month, 20 year, three months. Uh, just, I did this just in case there's some of you that say, no, 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 Dustin, it's not the tens versus the twos. It's something else. Well, here's everything. So uh, the tens versus twos, 98% of the time you have a recession. 10 years are important because that's sort of the benchmark um, assumption of the forward fed funds rates. That's kind of geeky, but that's, that's what that's for. Uh, anyways, as you work your way down, you can see not every time, it's true, not every pair leads to a recession. For example, the one year versus the one month, when that goes inverted, only 90% of the time of all scenarios did we have a recession. I'll, now granted, those aren't the best of odds. I think we could both agree. The only time that it leans in your favor is when the far end of the curve inverts. That's quite an effort it takes to make that happen. Uh, 30 year versus the 20 year, only 46% of the time. So less than 50-50 shot, you've got one of those. Otherwise, look at how many times, 100% or even 90%, more than two thirds of these give you greater than a 90% chance of having followed it, fallen into a recession. Did that scare you? It shouldn't scare you. It seems scary, but you know why it shouldn't scare you? If you've been around for a while, you know, stock markets bounce in recessions. That's also a fact. Uh, look at the, uh, I, you go back and look as many as you want, but uh, the COVID recession, we bounced hard during the you know small little recession that we had uh the great financial crisis market bounced during a recession why because recessions are backward looking they're a lagging indicator if you want to sound really smart in front of your friends it's a lagging indicator the market has already said the worst is behind us the economy will recover it will be great yes we see the weakness we see the slowdown in growth uh, but it's getting better markets bounce in recessions so don't put together a recession with a bear market. Those two are not always correlated and overlapping. It's pretty close, but not always the case. Here's the bad news though. If we take all of these and we say, well, I barely know what Dustin's talking about. How many of these are inverted right now? There you go. That's the bad news. All of the nine, almost all of the 90s are inverted right now, meaning 90%. Twos versus threes, one versus threes, and 30s versus 20s inverted. So even your last glimmer of hope at the one that says, oh, maybe we won't, you know, it's less than 50%, those are inverted. So this 46%, those odds kick in. That all in red boxes, by the way. I hope you can see it. The, everything that's boxed in red is a recession or is uh, inverted at the moment. Not a good sign. However, please remember, I've done this class for clients too. We went through every single recession and I showed, and then we took it a little bit further and we said, is there anything about like the percentage of the way through the recession, the market bounces? There actually is. If we find out the recession started here and it ended here, where did the market bounce? 30% of the way through the recession, 50%, 70, 80, what was it? But they, they bounce during the recession. So we, we had a little fun with some geeky stuff. We do a class every week. It's called uh, Wine and Wealth, where we've lately been whiskey and wealth. But uh, I try to just go deeper. I right? talk about something that's just, you know, put a little study together or something. And that was one of the fun ones that we did. So there's your lesson of the night. Good, bad, scary. You know, it may, maybe you look at that and say, awesome. We need a freaking recession. There's so many people spending money. Uh, every business is backed up forever. Maybe we need to slow things down a little bit. Just maybe. Anyways, I thank you for watching. Late at night here. Well, late at night for me. Uh, we will. The next class, by the way, if you're curious, the next one that we're going to do, Jazz After Dark, if you want to come back, is um, is inflation spiking a good reason to buy gold? And I'm not going to give you my opinion. We're going to go look. And every time inflation spiked and was really aggressive and we thought, oh my gosh, it's going to get out of control, then we're going to look at gold. 
and I'm going to try to share with you, I'm going to actually share with you that performance so you can see whether you should be, you know, the commercials, they say, buy gold in your IRA, or maybe you're thinking about buying a gold ETF or something. We're going to go over that. Anyways, I hope these things are helpful to you. And if they are, of course, I'm supposed to ask you to help me by clicking the subscribe button at the very least. Uh, at the most, if you're looking for a financial advisor, jazzwealth.com. I hope you'll keep us in mind here. We like to do the geeky stuff and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed. All right. That's it. Enjoy the rest of your night. See you.